Nigeria has recorded six new cases of coronavirus, bringing the total number of infections in the country to 190. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control made this known on Friday. NCDC tweeted, and I quote, six new cases of COVID-19 have been reported in Oshun state of Nigeria. As of 11 a.m. on the 3rd of April, there are 190 confirmed cases of COVID-19 reported in Nigeria. 20 of them have been discharged with two deaths. Currently, Lagos has 91 cases, Abuja 35, Oshun 20, Oyo 8, Akwaibom 5, Ogun Edo and Kaduna 4 cases each, Bauchi 3, Enugu and Ekiti 2 cases each, Rivers 1 and Benue 1 case respectively. And joining us live via Skype is Dr. Uche Okorocha to take a look at these numbers. Good morning, Dr. Good morning. Okay. Uh, good to have Thanks you. For well, me. good afternoon. Uh, good to have you. Now um, we know that you are following the trend. We're seeing the figures increasing. Is it that we are not doing enough as a people? Oh no. Um, this is going to happen. We are at a certain phase. Uh, you know, in the pattern of outbreaks, right. we're at a phase where it's going to continue to increase. Um, up to a certain peak, and then at some point it starts to come down. So we're at that phase. It's really not because we're doing anything right or wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, the increases we're seeing across the country uh, is not unexpected. Okay, so are we likely to see what's going to be the difference in the coming days? We see the intervention so far. Are we going to likely see any kind of difference uh, in the coming days? Unfortunately, um, the pattern suggests that we're going to continue to see an increase in the numbers uh, over the next week, possibly even two. Mm -hmm. And then um, at some point it starts to come down. But here's what's important. If we put up a really robust uh, response, uh, the peak can be maybe not so high. In other words, the highest number uh, will be determined by our level of response and then how long it takes before we really come down. Mm. Again, that will be determined by the strength of our response. Okay. Now, talking about response, uh, let's look at those in the front lines, medical practitioners, for instance. Do we have enough uh, and do, are they getting any kind of support system or some kind of relief during this time? So this is a crisis situation. Um, there is a bit of humanity, I'd like to assume, in every healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason, it's a calling, right? Um, rather than just another vocation. Right. So um, it is logical to expect that the authorities show appreciation, that we all show appreciation to those who are on the front line. And then also it makes sense to give them an incentive uh, for putting themselves at risk. Uh, but more than that, we need to provide them everything that is necessary in order to continue to be safe uh, while looking after the rest of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen pictures of uh, medical practitioners from different places, you know, saying, stay at home and stay safe. We, we are here, some of them in the ICU, and they say, we are here because of you. Stay home because of us. Now, help us understand how important it is at this time for, you know, people to heed to that call to stay at home as a way to curb the spread of COVID-19. So, so, yeah, listen, the, the people who are calling on us to stay at home uh, are people who are there and they know what they have to deal with, they know what constraints they have, they know what the limitations are, and they are saying, um, you know, we're having to deal with more than enough already. Can you just help us and help yourselves as well by staying at home and reducing the spread of this virus? Mm -hmm. If we don't move, the virus does not spread. Right. And also, we have heard about, you know, the government saying, you know, uh, amidst other 
kind of uh, measures put in place is the social distancing. But we also know that, I mean, there are some people in other, in other quarters who do not take this as uh, serious as it should be. And part of what we do as you know, media people, and especially here in Plus TV Africa, is to use this opportunity to educate and sensitize the people, uh, the need for uh, social distancing. Please, again, help us reiterate, uh, for those who will be watching and listening to you, why it is important to practice the social distancing during this time. Right. I would like to sort of lean towards um, describing what we're supposed to be doing as physical distancing mm -hmm. rather than social distancing. Right. Uh, social distancing tends to have a negative connotation with people as if um, somebody just doesn't want people to interact with one another, but that's not what it is. We could, for example, now, thanks to technology, we are able to talk to each other and talk to everyone who's listening at this time. Yeah. However, this virus, although um, it's not yet called an airborne virus, is spread via droplets. The droplets, when they come out from somebody who is infected, can travel up to maybe six feet before it drops and lands on the surface. So if you're within six feet of someone who's infected, mm -hmm. you're going to inhale it or it's going to settle on your body somewhere and then you get infected. And you have no means of knowing who is infected because people who don't have symptoms actually have this virus. Right. Now, uh, Dr. Okoracha, you, we have seen in the news that we have 20 persons who have recovered from COVID-19, for which we are grateful and happy. However, we also know that there is no known vaccine or, uh, you know, medicine that is, is being used. So how is this happening? Is this some sort of miracle? What is going on here? Viral conditions typically would burn themselves out and then they will go away. So there are many factors. Mm -hmm. The first one is um, we have to wait until this whole thing is over and then we check the numbers. And, and secondly, um, it has to do with the immune system. If your immune system is strong enough mm -hmm. to withstand the assault, then you are able to mount a strong enough resistance and uh, hopefully you're able to pull through different individuals. It runs a different course in different individuals. Some have uh, what we call subclinical symptoms. Some have next to no symptoms at all. Some have very severe symptoms. And unfortunately, uh, some die. But in the end, um, many more people will survive mm -hmm. than uh, will die. Maybe that's a, a bright side to look at it. Mm -hmm. That's a very hopeful way to end it. Thank you so very much, Dr. Okoracha, for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, and I wish to congratulate all of you at Plus TV Africa for being on DSTV right now.